Alright, uh, good morning everybody. We are going to start off today by uh, doing slides 16 through 18 from the Desmos warm-up. So uh, open that up if you haven't opened that up and we'll dive right in. Um, the problems that we've got for our warm-up today are some of these regular polygons that we first saw back on Friday. Um, and so to start things off, we need to remember that our end goal here is to use this formula, one-half AP, where the A is the apothem. So that is one thing we must find there. Remember, that's the distance from the center uh, down to the midpoint of one of the sides. So that should split that side in half. And remember, the apothem also forms a right angle. Um, and then the P is the perimeter. Distance all the way around our shape. Now usually one of these things is pretty easy to find. In this case our perimeter should be pretty easy to find. We know that this is a regular triangle so each side is the same. So if one side is 10 like we can see then we just need to do 3 times 10 and we get 30 for the perimeter. So that part's done. So the tricky part then becomes finding the apothem. Now remember our technique here is to always kind of form this little right triangle here with the radius uh, the apothem and half the side length. We should know half the side length there is 5 since the whole side is 10. And so to find that apothem, what we really need to find is this angle right there. Now we had a little formula to do that. We wrote this down back on Friday. Uh, it is 360 divided by 2n, where n is the number of sides. In this case, it's 2 times 3 since it's a triangle. And 360 divided by 2 times 3, 360 divided by 6 is 60. So this angle here becomes 60. Uh, and that makes it a little 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, which means that the apothem there is going to be um, the short leg of our 30, 60, 90 triangle. And if our long leg is 5 and our short leg is... Uh, the thing that we're trying to find there, then hopefully you remember um, to go back to the short leg, you have to divide by the square root of 3. So 5 divided by root 3, we don't like the root 3 on the bottom, so we do this, we get 5 root 3 over 3 for our apothem. Um, so now we've got everything we want. We're going to do 1 half times 5 root 3 over 3 times the perimeter, which is 30. So let me multiply all those numbers together. I'm going to leave the root 3 out of it. I'm just going to do 1 half times 5 over 3 times 30. And I got 25, so this would be 25 root 3. And I'll just say this is units squared. Now once again, to get that 25, I just multiplied 1 half times 5 over 3. I didn't multiply the root 3 times 30. I'm just leaving the root 3. I'm just going to stick it on at the end. So that was just 1 half times 5 over 3 times 30. Gave me the 25, and I stuck the root 3 on the end. Okay. What about this guy? Hexagon time. Now once again, regular hexagon. So, we know our formula is 1 half AP. Um, and let's see here. Let me draw in that apothem. We're going to need that. This one's interesting because they gave us the radius. They said the radius is 10. So, like on the first one I said, usually one of those two things is easy to find, the apothem or the perimeter. This one's kind of tricky because they gave us the radius. So, let's just go ahead and immediately try to find this top angle. Remember, to find that angle... We do 360, 360 divided by 2n, where n is the number of sides. This is a hexagon, so 2 times 6. 360 divided by 2 times 6, or 2 times, or I'm sorry, 360 divided by 12, is 30. So that's a 30 degree angle up there. Let me do that in a different color. That didn't help at all. Maybe... Nope, didn't help. Um, but that is a 30 degree angle up there. 
Now that does make it a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, oh, you know what I could do? Let me just kind of, let me do this. This will make it easier to see. It's that 10 that's making things weird. So I'm gonna draw it back up here. So they're saying this is 10 and this angle is 30. That's what we found. Now that's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And if you remember your 30, 60, 90 triangle, we're in business. That means the short leg is five, right? Right, the short leg's always half the hypotenuse. And the long leg is five root three. Um, so we know that our apothem is five root three. And if the short leg's five, that means a whole side must be five and five, which means the whole side's 10. So my perimeter would be six sides because it's a hexagon. Each side's 10, my perimeter is 60. So not too bad, we got everything we need. One half times five root three, that's the apothem, times the perimeter, which is 60. Once again, remember, I'm just gonna multiply everything together that is not the root three. One half times five times 60 is 150. So this is 150 root three inches squared. So knowing those 30, 60, 90 is really helpful here, really helpful. All right, and our last one is the pentagon. Ooh, okay. Now remember, if you remember from Friday, a pentagon is one of those ones that does not form a special right triangle. Uh, when we draw in our little triangle here, they're giving us the apothem is five. So that's nice at least. We're still gonna use this formula. And we already know that our apothem is five. That's good. Let's go ahead and find this top angle because that's gonna be the key part. We're gonna do 360 divided by two n, where n is the number of sides. So that's 360 divided by two times five. Two times five is 10. 360 divided by 10 is 36. So my top angle is 36. Now, if we're going to be able to find this, we already know our apothem is five. We need the perimeter, right? You gotta be able to plug that perimeter in there. If we're gonna find the perimeter, we need this. Because if we can find that opposite side, that's my hypotenuse, this is my adjacent. If I can find that opposite side, then I can find the whole side, and then I can multiply by five to get my perimeter. Now, if I want the opposite and I have the apothem, or the adjacent, uh, I'm going to use tangent. Tangent of 36 is equal to x over 5. x is on top, so I will multiply 5 times tangent of 36. It's giving me 3.6. So that little side is 3.6. Now that means that this is also 3.6, which means the whole side is 7.2. So my perimeter will be five sides, each side being 7.2. 7.2 times five is 36. So my perimeter is 36. Now I've got everything I need. One half times five times 36 is 90 centimeters, oops, I almost called it units, forgot that we have centimeters, 90 centimeters squared. Once again, once we got that 7.2, right, that means all the sides are 7.2, so our perimeter is at 36. All right, cool. So <clears throat> that was our warm-up for today. Uh, next up on our to-do list is to handle the last page of notes that you should have picked up on the way in for unit six. Let me hop back over there. All right, today should be pretty straightforward. All we're dealing with is some things called composite shapes. And uh, composite shapes are just shapes stuck together. Uh, just not one single shape that we're gonna calculate the area of, but more complicated shapes, shapes that are comprised of many shapes. And the, really the secret of today is just to break it apart. To find the area of a composite figure, you will find the individual areas and sum them up. Um, so to find the area of a composite figure, uh, break the composite shape up into smaller shapes
and add the areas together. All right, so uh, looking at this first example, what I see right away is I see two shapes. I see a semicircle and I see a triangle. Now, this semicircle here, this guy, uh, that is half of a circle. Now, a circle has a formula of pi r squared. So to find a semicircle, I will do 1 half pi r squared. Uh, there's only one thing that I need to find uh, for a, uh, a semicircle, and that's the radius. And we can quite clearly see that that is 5. So I'm going to do 1 half times 5 squared. Let me see what I get. 1 half times 5 squared is, uh, or I'm sorry, 1 half uh, pi times 5 squared is 39.3. I got 39.3 for that. Um, then I have my triangle. Triangle formula, if you remember back from uh, before, is 1 half base times height. So this will be 1 half times, um, let's just be careful here. The whole base, this whole thing, would be 10, right? 5 and 5. So 1 half times 10 times 8 should give me 40. So then I will add those together. 39.3 plus 40 is 79.3 inches squared. So once again, just uh, divide them up into the individual parts and then uh, add them up at the end. Let's see what we got here. Looks like I got uh, three shapes. So. I've got this triangle on the top. I've got this guy. Um, I've got this rectangle. And then I have this bottom trapezoid. We'll find those, we'll add them together, and then we'll uh, be on our way. Triangle, uh, we just saw that formula, 1 half base times height. For the green triangle here, my base would be 15, right, because it'd be the same as the rectangle on the other side. So 1 half times 15 times 9. 1 half times 15 times 9 is giving me 67.5. Um, then we've got our rectangle. Our rectangle formula is just base times height. So that'd be 15 times 4. 15 times 4 is 60. And then we have our trapezoid. Our trapezoid formula, 1 half B1 plus B2 times the height. Um, remember our bases are those parallel sides, so that should be 18 and 15, our height is 4. 1 half times 18 plus 15 times 4 is 66. So I'm going to take 67.5 plus 60 plus 66. And I am getting 193.5 centimeters squared. So once again, guys, just find those individual areas and add them all up. Let's go to the inside. All right, we got three kind of weird ones on the inside here. Ooh, I like this one. I like this one. <clears throat> okay, so I see three things. Um, this one's a little bit trickier to see, but here's what I see. I see... Semicircle here. So I've got a blue semicircle. Then I've got this semicircle, or I almost have that semicircle, right? 
I've got the majority of that semicircle, but I don't have one piece of it. There's one piece of that yellow semicircle that I don't have, and that's this part. This little part here is missing, but that little part is also a semicircle. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find all three of them. I'm going to add blue and yellow together, and then I will subtract the green part. So actually, let's go back up here real fast. Let's make a note that we're not always going to add the areas together. I'm going to make a note right here, or subtract. Sometimes we have to remove pieces that we don't want. That's an important thing. Now, let's start with that blue one, right? These are all semicircles, so these are all 1 half pi r squareds. For the blue part, the radius of the blue part, from here on out, if that whole piece there is 12, this is going to be 6. So I'm going to do pi 6 squared, or 1 half pi 6 squared. 1 half pi 6 squared giving me 56.5. For the yellow part, the diameter of the yellow part, hmm, or the radius of the yellow part, sorry. Now this is kind of weird. This whole thing from here all the way to there is 18, which means that my radius, half of that, is 9. That's kind of weird to see. So 1 half pi 9 squared is giving me 127.2. And then we got the green part. 1 half pi r squared. Well, what's the radius of the green part? The radius of the green part, they're giving us the diameter is 6, so the radius is going to be 3. So I'm going to do 1 half times pi times 3 squared for that one. And that will give me 14.1. So what am I doing again? I am adding the blue and the yellow, and I'm removing the green because that part's blank. I don't want that. 56.5 plus 127.2 minus 14.1 is giving me 169.6 centimeters squared. Cool. That's a good one. I like that. Okay. Um, what have we here? Okay. So sometimes you'll see a problem that's talking about shaded area. And if there's ever like a shaded part, that's what you want the area of. You don't want the white part. So my goal here is to find just the area of the gray part. I don't want the white part. So let's kind of break this down. First thing I see is the big shape. The big shape is this big rectangle looking guy. So we've got big rectangle. And I want that part. Well, I want most of it. I don't want these white parts, so I'm going to have to subtract those. So one of the things I don't want is the semicircle here. I'm going to need more room than that. I don't want the semicircle. Um, I don't want this part. Right? I don't want that little rectangle. And I also don't want this semicircle. So there's actually, actually a lot that I don't want. Um, but let's start with the big one. That's the part that I do want. So that is a big rectangle, so I'm just going to do 20.9 times 
20.9 times 18.7 is 390.8. Now for the semicircle, that's 1 half pi r squared. 1 half times pi times the radius is that 8.1 there. 1 half times pi times 8.1 squared is 103.1. Uh, then we have the blue rectangle. Um, well, that's base times height, of course, but it's 3.7 times. What's the height of that thing? I guess the whole height would be this 2.3 times 2, right? Both of those would be a 4.6 if you just double it. So 3.7 times 4.6 is 17. Um, then we have the last one, which is 1 half pi r squared again. This is 1 half times, oops, 1 half times pi. Forget about that. 1 half times pi times 2.3 squared, because that would be the radius for that one. And that is 8.3. Okay, so what are we doing here again? We are going to do 390.8. Um, that's the whole thing. And then we want to remove all those white shapes. So all the other three. So we're going to do minus 1.3.1, minus 17, minus 8.3. I'm getting 261.9 meters squared. All right. Um, so what about our last one here? This guy. Cool. So we kind of have, kind of only have two things. We've got these triangles, and then we've got this pentagon, right? So let's go ahead, let's focus on this pentagon first. This pentagon is going to be the tricky part. So pentagon. Um, pentagon has a formula of one half AP, right? And I'm talking about, I'm talking about this part. One half AP since it's a regular polygon. Now, we should know all of those sides are going to be 5. So really we've got 1 half times something times 25 because the perimeter is going to be 5 of those. Um, but the apothem is the tricky part because the apothem is like it's this, right? It goes from the center on out. Now if we're going to find that what we're going to need to know is what that central angle is. 360 divided by 2n was the little rule that we used to do that, right? We just saw this in the warm-up today. 360 divided by 10 is 36. So that angle is 36. And this side would have to be 2.5, right? Half of 5. So what I'm going to do, let me just kind of... Let me redraw this down here. We've got a 36 degree angle. We know that's 2.5, and we want that. That would be our apothem. That's O, that's H, that's A. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do tangent. Tangent of 36 is equal to 2.5 over X. X is on the bottom, so I am dividing in my calculator here. I'm doing 2.5 divided by tangent 36. And I'm getting that x is 3.4. And that is my apothem. That is this right here. So now we can find the area of that. Right? I'm just going to do 1 half times 3.4 times 25. 
and I'm getting 42.5. Okay, so that's the area of the pentagon. Now we just need these triangles, and we've got five triangles. Each triangle will have the same formula, one half base times height. Um, our base is five, right? All of these sides are five. And what is our height? Our height is that seven that we can see on the lower triangle. So one half times five times seven is 17.5. So what do I need to do here at the end? I gotta do 42.5 plus five times 17.5 since I have five of those. And I am getting 100 and 30 centimeters squared. Boom. Got it. Okay. Um, so what do I want you guys to do next? I want you to forget about the left side. Let's not worry about that unless you've got time at the end. Um, what I want you to do actually is to head back to the performance task the project that we started. So you all should have already made your design here, um, utilizing those tiles. We did that back on Friday. Um, but the next step is to figure out how much of the kitchen we actually have to cover. Because you're not tiling the whole kitchen, right? You're not gonna be tiling the island or the countertop area. What you're really trying to tile is just this spot in here. You're just trying to tile this part, but not this part, right? You're not gonna be putting tiles on the island. So your goal here, and the next step of this project, is to figure out the area in here. Okay, so there's a couple different ways of thinking about this, but that is your mission, and you are going to be showing your work right here, okay? Um, so for the rest of your time here, now that you've finished your notes and done your warm-up, work on this part. Try to figure out that area of just that green highlighted area that I put in there, and when you get that done, then you can go ahead and start working on that last page um, from the homework packet. Okay, so try to find the area of that section that you're covering there. Um, maybe break that island apart into some smaller shapes because you are going to need to find the area of that island. Um, find the area of that part that you're trying to tile, and then you can work on your homework. All right, um, so tomorrow on Tuesday we'll have a work day to finish up um, this project because we still got to got to do all this parts um, and then make a little presentation part. So I will see you guys tomorrow and uh, good luck finding the area of that 